When you work in Revit, you will likely spend a great deal of time selecting and modifying objects that have been placed in the building model. To help identify objects, Revit includes an automatic highlighting feature. In the plan view, I'll zoom in to the ramp. When I move the cursor over the ramp, it highlights, and a description appears both in a tooltip and on the status bar. And when I click to select the object, the object turns blue so that I can see that it's been selected. When I zoom in on the ramp in the 3D view, I can see that the ramp is highlighted in that view as well. Each view in Revit is just a different way of looking at the building model. When you select an object in one view, it's selected in the building model and is highlighted in every open view. I'll maximize the plan view and then zoom out so I can see the entire view. When you attempt to select an object, if there are several objects in the same location, you may find it difficult to select the desired object. For example, I want to select the floor, but when I move the cursor near the exterior wall, Revit is finding the wall, not the floor. But when I press the Tab key, Revit will cycle through the objects near the cursor. Eventually, I can see that it has found the floor because Revit reports this in both the tooltip and on the status bar. Now I can click to select the floor. Again, when I select the floor, it turns blue, and I can see in the Properties palette that the floor is selected. I'll switch to the default 3D view, zoom out, and then select the roof. Once I do, the roof turns blue, indicating that it is selected, and again, I can see this in the Properties palette. Also realize that the roof has become semi-transparent. I can see the walls and columns in the next level below the roof. This can be controlled from the Options dialog. I'll expand the Application menu and click Options. Revit displays the Options dialog. I'll switch to the Graphics options. In the Colors group, there's a semi-transparent checkbox. You can change the colors to anything you choose and also clear the semi-transparent option if you prefer elements remain opaque when selected. I'll click Cancel to close the Options dialog and then switch to the Level 1 floor plan view. I'll zoom in on the workstations in the southeast corner of the building and then select one of those workstations. When I select a workstation, it turns blue, so I can see that it's selected. If I select a different workstation, however, that one becomes selected, but the previous workstation is no longer selected. To select more than one object, press and hold down the Control key while selecting objects. Revit will then add each object to the selection set. Pay attention to the plus sign next to my cursor when I press Control. If you select an object by mistake, you can easily remove it from the selection set. To do this, press and hold down the Shift key and select the object again. When you click an object while pressing the Shift key, the object is deselected. Notice the minus sign next to my cursor when I press Shift. There are also a number of other ways to select objects. When you click and drag the cursor, you can select objects using a window or a crossing window. If you click and drag from left to right, Revit uses a selection window. Only the objects entirely inside the window will be selected. Objects outside the window or crossing the window border will not be selected. So notice that I can select only the workstations and not the grid lines. If you click and drag from right to left, however, Revit uses a crossing window. Objects entirely inside the window or crossing its border will be selected. Now I have selected workstations, grid lines, a section, 
and a room. When you select multiple objects, Revit displays the number of objects that have been selected in the Properties palette, and in the ribbon, you can see a Filter tool. Depending on your screen resolution, you may also see a Filter button in the lower right corner of the status bar. When you click the Filter button, Revit displays the Filter dialog. The Category list shows all of the categories of objects currently selected, along with how many objects of each category and the total number of selected objects. To select one particular category, you can clear the checkboxes adjacent to the other categories. For example, to select only the structural columns, click Check None, and then select the Structural Columns checkbox and click OK. Now, only the structural columns are selected. I'll click anywhere in the drawing area to deselect those columns and then zoom in on the core of the building. When you are working with multiple objects, such as walls, that are joined together in a continuous chain, you can select the entire chain rather than having to pick each individual wall. Watch as I move the cursor over a core wall, then press the Tab key. Revit highlights the entire chain of connected walls. I can then click to select all of those core walls. I'll press Escape to deselect those walls. You can also use this method to select a partial chain. For example, if I only want to select the left, right, and upper core walls, I can select the wall on the left, then move the cursor over the north end of the core wall on the right, and then press the Tab key. Revit highlights just the left, top, and right core walls, and when I click, just those three walls are selected. I'll press the Escape key to deselect those walls. If I want to select the left, right, and bottom core walls, I can select the wall on the left, then move the cursor over the south end of the core wall on the right, and then press the Tab key. This time, Revit highlights the left, right, and bottom core walls, and when I click, just those three walls are selected. So the partial chain depends on where you position the cursor. I'll press Escape to deselect those walls. After selecting objects to modify and making changes, if you haven't selected any other objects, then you can reselect the same objects again by either pressing the Control key and the left arrow key on the keyboard, or by right-clicking and choosing Select Previous from the shortcut menu. And also realize that if you select a single object, you can quickly create another object just like it by either clicking Create Similar in the contextual ribbon, or by right-clicking and choosing Create Similar. Similarly, to find every instance of the element, you can right-click and choose Select All Instances. If you choose Visible in View, only those items that you can see in the current active view will be selected. Select All Instances in Entire Project will not only select those that you can see, but also those that you can't see, which could be anywhere in the project, such as another floor, or even hidden in the current view, or nested in a group. Once all these elements are selected, they can be modified. To deselect an element, simply click Modify. 